Hey guys, Aileen here from Homegrown Happiness. It's my second video for April this month. I thought it might be time for another garden tour and show you what's growing and what's going to be feeding us for the next couple of months. We're going to start off in this little garden that I missed talking about in my last video. This is like like our middle section garden, like the chicken coop's really near it and in the summer it gets pretty good sun but in the winter this hill that I'm sitting on at the moment and the house uh, behind me blocks it. So at the moment in that garden I have leeks and parsnips and some silver beet and some broccoli, swedes, and celery as well and tomatoes and capsicums and eggplants from in the summer and the tomatoes are looking a little bit worse for wear. All their leaves are gone. I took those off and I'm just letting these last ones ripen but I'm going to take them off before they get too ripe because the birds will get them and then let them ripen further on my windowsill. And then my capsicums, they have done really well. So they're always going to stay green. I had one that turned red, but the rest of them, they will not get the warmth and the sunlight to turn red. But that being said, I'm still super happy with how many I have. Um, it's probably my best year for capsicums. So I'll leave those plants out a little bit longer and then I'm still tossing up um, where I'm going to overwinter them. If I'm just going to leave them there and maybe cover them or take them inside. I think I'm gonna, I'm veering towards just leaving them there. And then here is some of the broccoli. And this is an example of how my broccoli grows when it doesn't get much sun. It goes very tall and skinny and starts looking a little bit more like sprouting broccoli. But hey, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to look perfect. It's still delicious. And then there are the leeks and the parsnips. Alright, coming up to the top garden. So that's where I am sitting here at the moment. And this garden is pretty much full of just winter staples. So except for a little bit, bits and pieces that I've left from the summer, a couple of beans and tomatoes, pretty much full of just things for, yeah, late autumn, early winter. So for example, over here is my yakon. So this is like an underground tuber that's really sweet and juicy. It's a little bit like a mix of celery and apple. And I won't be harvesting this until like early winter or late, late autumn. I'm just gonna leave them here there to fatten up underground for as long as I can. We like it fresh, just like grated in salads. It's just a really yummy, crunchy vegetable. Or if I have a, a lot of it, I'll make a syrup out of it, which I have on the blog. Just a concentrated yakon syrup. Super juicy, so you take all that liquid and then you boil it down. I have some beans left, so I harvested the majority as dried beans. Um, so my archway is empty, but at the bottom there were a couple more that I'd planted a little bit later on, so they are still producing some beans. And I'm really excited this year to get my first few jowers from the trees that I planted. And I know it doesn't seem like much, and I would have about four or five, but they were planted. Um, five years ago these trees but they were grown from seed so when you plant the trees from seed like the joas anyway they can take really long to actually fruit so the fact that they are fruiting already is really cool and I have quite a few trees so maybe next year I'll get even more and then I have a few tomatoes left over but I have to pick them as fast as I can because the birds will get them the moment they're red and then here is all my celeriac. So that was planted way back in spring. So this is a really great winter staple. It's really similar to celery. In fact, you can eat the greens like celery. Um, maybe they're a little bit more fibery, but um, you usually harvest it for the underground root, which is like got a celery taste, but texture more like potato when it's cooked. And then here are my top brassicas. So this is that bed that I always have netted, but I've just, take, I've just taken the netting off now just to check on them because um, some of them are aphids. Um, but I'll put that netting back on after I have dealt with the aphids. I use a neem oil spray um, because the white butterfly is still around.
right now coming down to I have this like little down by our stairs I have this little patch that I didn't do anything with until spring last year so this is my first so when it comes to spring this year that'll be my first full year of having stuff in it and it's really great because it's just another area to grow food and even though in winter it doesn't get much sun it gets it up until late autumn at least in the morning so I can definitely use it so I have some bok choy and some Chinese cabbage under that netting but I also sowed a green crop just to nourish the soil over winter because I won't be planting much else there until next spring yeah so if you have any empty spaces in your garden that you're not using over winter it's a really good idea to sow a green cover crop that can be a whole range of different plants if um, I've chosen a nitrogen fixing crop so that's why there's heaps of legumes in there there's lupins and peas um, and they will yeah fix the gaseous nitrogen in the air and return it to the soil in a form that other plants can take up which will be really great in um, spring when I put some heavy feeders in there for the summer crops but you could also plant mustard or some uh, buckwheat or oats or anything really that's going to cover that soil and keep it nourished and protected over the winter because the soil doesn't need to rest as uh, that's a pretty common misconception that we must let our soil rest but the fact is it's, it's alive with all these um, soil organisms that need food and water and protection so, so yeah just keep on adding organic matter on there whether it's a mulch or a uh, living green cover and then here are my yams so they are New Zealand yams ochre they were planted back in October just from the little yam tuber itself that sprouted and I planted those I probably won't harvest those until about June so you can yeah the later you harvest them the bigger they'll get but if you have problems with drainage or pests and stuff obviously you might need to get them up a little bit sooner but I'm thinking that I will just harvest them as I need them and I have more yams growing in pots and what's good about that is that I can do a little sneaky check to see how they're going by pulling up the whole root ball and checking the bottom so see they're pretty small still this is another garden that is fairly new um, same time really as the one I just showed you and a great addition to the growing space and I have a whole lot of random things in there endive, brassicas and then heaps of stuff around in pots and then this is my other front garden which has loads of random things strawberries and lettuce and mustard and brassicas carrots chilies big plants and i planted my first lot of garlic here just a couple of cloves i don't think i have a dedicated space for garlic this year last year i um, put them in the bed where those brassicas were they just didn't get that much sun um, even in spring which is when they really needed it so i am just going to space garlic around my, uh, my garden this year and just see which parts do the best. So I've still got lots of seedlings going now inside for some winter planting but they won't be ready until spring and some more brassicas, broccoli and cauliflower. Um, I, have, I have dotted broad beans around everywhere and peas as well um, because they're just always great and they probably won't do much again until spring when they really get some sunshine but come spring when all this winter stuff is gone it'll be really appreciated. And that's it for today's garden video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.